What's up guys, it's Ivan and in this video I am reading a successful statement of purpose for the Master of Computer and Information Technology program at the University of Pennsylvania. Before we look at the statement of purpose, I want to help one of you guys out during this application season so I am hosting a giveaway. One of you will be winning a full application review. This means that I will read and provide feedback for your statement of purpose, your resume or CV, and your writing sample. Watch the entire video to learn how to end to this giveaway. I never imagined that my education would end up saving a life. With a triple immigrant family background, I was born in Canada to Chinese immigrant parents before moving to the United States and then immigrating again to South Korea. I am acutely cognizant of just how interconnected people are to one another, even across countries. Thanks to the internet, national borders that once dictated the, the accessibility of education are more porous than ever. With such massive quantities of data and information flowing across international borders, Orders, someone must be able to make sense of it all and provide the best means of communication between customers and providers. Unfortunately, this unprecedented increase in opportunities did not come with the proportionate increase in access. So this introductory paragraph of the statement of purpose is actually really interesting. Right off the bat, the writer gives us a hook. So they say, I never imagined that my education would end up saving a life. So as a reader, I am intrigued to know how this person is going to save a life through what he has learned in his education. As you can tell in the paragraph that follows the statement, he does not explain really what that is, but it's foreshadowing what we should expect to learn more about in the rest of the statement of purpose. In the main introductory paragraph, he describes a little bit about his background. He talks about coming from a triple immigrant background, mentioning that he was born in Canada, parents are Chinese, so he's Chinese, but now he lives in, in South Korea. So that's giving the reader a little bit of background on who this applicant is in terms of his culture and obviously his, his background, right? So where he's coming from, etc. So as a reader, I'm inclined to learn a little bit more about that journey. So I'm inclined to learn about where he's currently at, work he's doing, is he in South Korea, is he in Canada, he's, is he in China? Then he also talks about what he is interested in. So something to do with the internet, right? And we know that this application is for a master's of computer and information technology program. And so we know that the internet somehow is going to shape what he wants to do in the future. And it looks like he's really interested in like the national border. So making, in this case, education more accessible across the world. His goal, it has something to do with international borders, a international um, access to education by utilizing the internet, by utilizing data and information sciences, right? So we learn all of this in this short little paragraph. Although I graduated from college in 2014 and finished my second graduate degree in 2019, I have not ceased availing myself of the power of the internet to augment my skills and knowledge. In 2020, I made an account with the company Masterclass and completed a course on negotiation taught by a former FBI hostage negotiator. Despite having zero formal training in managing mental health crises, the skills and knowledge I gained from this course allowed me to talk a suicidal person to calming down, opening the door, and even laughing at a few of my jokes in the end. This experience showed me the real impact that education can have on improving or in this case even saving people's lives, which led me to think to myself, is there any way to increase access to this kind of education to more people who need it? In this next paragraph, we learn a little bit more about what he wants to do with information technology, the internet, right? So in this paragraph, he describes what his cook was about, right? So how did he save a life? So he's telling us the story behind how he did this. And the way he did this was by enrolling in a master class course on negotiation. He was able to use what he learned in this online course to be able to save a life of a person who was suicidal. He used all the tactics and skills he learned from that course to be able to talk to this person and where he where this person was calmed down. And then at the end, obviously, he did not take his life. As as a reader, for me, I'm like thinking, okay, so this applicant is very invested in, in education and learning. He took the initiative to learn a new skill set by enrolling in a course. He's invested in learning new things. And as a committee, as a, as a graduate school committee, they're going to like that. They want to make sure that you are committed to education, to succeeding in your program, right? So he does, this, he does this really well by describing in a brief sentence saying that he has two master's degree, obviously his undergrad degree, and, uh, and then he's taking additional 
additional courses on his own time through different resources like Masterclass, right? So he's telling us a lot by a little in this little paragraph here. One thing that I do want you to know is the way that he is storytelling. He's not just mentioning things off of his resume, right? He's telling the story behind some of the things on his resume. So instead of just saying like, oh, I took a master class and I learned this skill set and here's what's going to help me get into grad school. He's going deeper and saying what the course was, what he learned, how he applied those skill sets to a real world challenge and what were the outcomes of that challenge and what he wants to do in the future to be able to increase access to education through the internet. And he, that's what you need to do in your statement of purpose. In the 21st century, there is no excuse for failing to adequately provide a solid education to every individual on the planet with the ambition to learn. Fortunately, educational outcomes can be measured and if something can be measured, it can be improved. I plan to avail myself of the skills that I will gain in MCIT to become a data scientist at an educational company and expand learning opportunities to those who could benefit most from them, such as by implementing database recommendations to help increase student engagement and retention. I desire to find the answers to questions such as how can we ascertain how much students have learned, what can we do to help students apply what they have learned, and how can we reach a wider audience, and many more. In this next paragraph, he's describing his goals. So he is saying that there is a need for accessibility worldwide of education to whoever is really interested and invested in learning more. So he's telling the committee that with this MCIT master's program, he wants to provide this accessibility worldwide. And he goes further by describing, here are some of the questions that I want to tackle while in grad school and then after grad school. So he talks about three tangible questions he wants to learn more about in grad school and that he wants to continue to um, tackle in his career. And he mentions what his career goal is. He wants to become a data scientist to tackle some of these pressing accessibility questions in education. One thing that I would say that he could have done to improve this paragraph, instead of saying, I want to work at an educational company, I would have recommended that he described, he mentioned an example of what such company, right? Does he want to work at, let's say, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on issues like this? Does he want to work at the World Bank? I would want him to think about an educational company he might want to work at. But again, it didn't really matter in this sense because he got into the program anyways. Doing so would require a deep understanding of programming, information technology, and da data science. Hence, MCIT's curriculum greatly appeals to me in a variety of ways. Within the core curriculum, CIT 591 Introduction to Software Development will familiarize me with the applications of Python and Java, both of which are powerful tools for the field of data science. On that same line, after completing the core curriculum, MCIT's elective offerings, specifically courses such as CIS 515 Fundamentals of Linear Algebra and Optimization and ESE 542 Statistics for Data Science and Applied Machine Learning course, provide the exact training I need to achieve achieve these career goals. So this next short paragraph really describes why this applicant wants to be a part of the MCIT's master's program. I want you to note that this person deeply researched the program online and the reason I know that is because he name dropped some of the core curriculum courses and elective courses he wants to take. So he says he wants to take CIT 591, CIS 515, SCE 542 and names what the, those courses are. And he goes beyond that and explains how this course is going to help me succeed and reach my goals. So he says that he's, he wants to learn Python and Java because he understands that these are powerful tools for data science and to achieve transformational change in education. So when you are writing your why this institution, why this program paragraph, I want you to be this specific. I want you to name drop some of the courses some of the internships, some of the research centers that you want to work at to achieve your goals and go further and state how those particular courses, internships, opportunities are going to help you achieve those goals. Tell them what type of gaps in your knowledge and skills those opportunities will help fill. All right, guys, so it's time for the giveaway instructions. In order for you to win a full application review that I will administer, I need you to subscribe to my channel and in the comments down below, I need you to tell me why you 
need a full application review and describe why you need this free opportunity. The deadline to enter this giveaway is September 30th. After this date, I will read every one of your comments and I will choose the winner and I will get to you as soon as I can. In particular, what draws me to computing for data science is the, the dispassionate and agnostic nature of data. During a final project for a class called Introduction to Quantitative Political Science at John Hopkins University, I opted to use statistical inference to analyze the death penalty as applied in the United States. I had hypothesized that due to the high pecuniary cost of capital punishment, the 15 counties in the United States that most frequently meted out this form of punishment would have high per capita incomes than those that do not. Ultimately, using a 95% confidence interval, a simple z-test revealed that I was unable to reject the null hypothesis. Although this project was a failure in terms of its results, it allowed me to experience firsthand the power of data when properly analyzing using the appropriate tools and providing objective insights to help improve society, irrespective of human of any human biases. So in this next paragraph, the applicant provides an example of the research he has done utilizing data science. He describes how his results were a failure in terms of what he was hypothesizing and what questions he was answering. He briefly states what type of research he had done. So he says that he did a quantitative study in the political science sector. And he does this by describing that he was trying to achieve a 95% confidence interval with the simple Z test. So that's describing that he knows how to conduct quantitative research. He's describing what he was doing in one simple sentence. So one thing that this applicant really does well is that he's able to describe a lot with a little. One or two sentences really describes his experiences, his stories, his, his skill sets. So I want you to take that from the statement of purpose. To expand upon my training, I have taken advantage of resources including Coursera to acquire technical skills that will be beneficial for success in the program. Notably, I have earned various certificates from Coursera in Python programming and have completed the Python portion of the Coursera specialization, Introduction to Programming with Python and Java, as taught by Brandon Krakowski, as, as well as the Introduction to Computational Thinking for Problem Solving course, and I am currently going through the Java portion of the specialization. In this next paragraph, he's again talking about his passion for learning, his passion for education, and how he's preparing to get into this rigorous program at the University of Pennsylvania. He's showing that he's preparing to have a strong background in Java and Python by taking courses in Coursera and he's not just saying that he's enrolled in the course he's saying that he's already completed a lot of certificates in in this computer science Python Java specialization so he's telling the committee here's how I'm preparing for your rigorous coursework and also this this course this master's program is strictly online and so his applicants doing a really good job of showing how he's gonna be able to succeed in an online platform because obviously Coursera the master class he talked about earlier are all self-paced online courses. As a gainly employed full-time worker, it would be difficult for me to take time off from work to pursue a degree in person. Additionally, I am in South Korea on a limited work visa and I aim to apply for permanent residency in a few years. Leaving South Korea to pursue an in-person program would hamper this goal and derail the career trajectory I have built here. Accordingly, the online nature of MCIT will allow me to continue working in my current position while pursuing this degree. Having taught myself various subjects throughout the years, I am confident that I have the drive, motivation, and responsibility to complete the courses in the program. In my current position as a teacher, when not actively teaching classes, I have 15 hours of downtime each week and I spend approximately an hour or two hours in evening on coding related MOOCs. If admitted to MCIT, I plan to incorporate the rigors of program of the program with my lifestyle by taking no more than two courses per semester, dedicating my downtime at my current place of employment to my studies, and replacing that time I spend on MOOCs with MCIT coursework. Furthermore, I plan to engage with peers through the various means of communication MCIT uses and indeed an admitted student and I have already helped each other work through some of the problems in the MOOCs offered by Penn Engineering. Like I mentioned earlier, this program is strictly online. So in this paragraph, the applicant does a really good job of explaining why he needs to be in a strictly online program. He talks about his experiences being a teacher in South Korea and how he's not a full citizen and he has a visa, so he has to stay in South Korea to potentially get a full work visa as a resident. And so he's explaining to the committee, here are some of the reasons why I need to do this 
this online program and why I can't be in person. And here's how I'm going to succeed in an online program. He talks about, again, his um, individual work with Coursera and Masterclass and how, how he has been able to achieve certificates um, and he's self-disciplined and can succeed in a regular self-paced course. He also describes how he's going to take the time that he used to take on his MOOCs that he did individually on coursework and, ha and he has a plan of only taking two classes per semester to be able to succeed both in his personal and his work life and then obviously in the program. And then he goes further and explains how he already contacted someone that's already in the program and how they have been working through some of the MOOCs that they have been working on together. So if you are interested in a strictly online program, I want you to take this as inspiration and I want you to justify why you need to be in an online program and why you cannot go in person. I have long believed that if I can share my own good fortune with just one person in need, then everything I have works so hard to achieve will have been worth it. The skills I will have acquired through MCIT's curriculum will allow me to not only expand opportunities to one person, but potentially thousands. And I hope that I will be given the chance to do precisely that. His concluding paragraph is very powerful. He's leaving the committee with an explanation of why he needs to attend the Master of Computer and Information Technology at the University of Pennsylvania right now. He's saying that he wants to not only maybe impact the life of the life of one person, but possibly thousands of people. And he wants to do this by joining this program, gaining those skill sets and experiences that can fill some of the gaps in his knowledge and skills, and that he wants to use that to impact the world through data science. When you are writing your statement of purposes for grad school, think of that impact and use that impact to drive your creation and development of your statement of purpose. Every program, every committee wants to know that you want to change the world in your sector, and the statement of purpose is the best way to storytell and tell them how you want to do that and why these programs and institutions are the best fit for you to do that. All right, guys, so I hope you learned a lot about writing statement of purpose from me reading this example and giving my feedback. Take inspiration from all the stuff that I said and use it to tailor your statement of purpose to match your experiences and goals. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.